You don't need it? You'll need it. Hi, Jill. Okay. After all these years, still don't understand what's going on. Swear to God. Yeah, but I mean, I don't even know how to take calls on I know. I've, I've been trained for one thing, that in the the letter on the first page, you want it to be an unqualified audit. Which, right. And if you hear that magic word, then we're good. Then that, you're good. That's what the minutes need to say. <laughs> and that's what the, all the minutes really need to say. Is everyone here to wish them happy holidays? I'm sure. That would be my guess. Well, the Arts Commission is here. Oh, yeah. Pro Menorah people are here. What? Boys and girls come from here. So we got, a, we got a group today. Over the years. Oh, did I get you? Yeah. Sorry. No, I think she got that. What is he talking about? I think, I think that. Uh, I don't realize any much I'm just. 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 I'm Oh, okay. Good, how are you? Good, you're getting ready for Christmas. Oh, yeah. Thank you, too. Okay, yeah, you should yeah. enjoy that little bit. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's right now. Uh, Thursday. Uh, this Thursday, I mean, I'm still on deck, but I'm just taking a couple of days this week, and then I have... 27th, seven inductions, got the 29th, and it's just nice. I haven't heard anything so. from anybody. Yeah. She's really well, good sweet. evening, everyone. All right, see you, Brian. I'm going to ask you to take a seat. And we'll get the Ferndale City Council meeting uh, for Monday, December 15th, 2014, to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, Sherilyn, would you call the roll, please? Council members Mem Lennon? Yes. Martin? Yes. Polica? Here. Piana? Here. Mayor Coulter? Here. Thank you. We have a quorum this evening. Uh, next item agenda would, uh, next item of business would be the approval of the agenda. What's council's pleasure on the agenda this evening? I would move that we accept the agenda as presented. Support. Moved by Martin and supported by Pollica. Any discussion? Sherilyn, one more time. Council members Lennon? Yes. Martin? Yes. Pollica? Yes. Piana? Yes. Mayor Coulter? Yes. Thank you. The agenda as, um, as presented is adopted. Moving on now to presentations, and we have four presentations this evening. Uh, the first one from the Ferndale Public Schools. Uh, Trustee <laughs> Amy Butters is here from the school board. Good evening. Good evening. I had some late breaking news that Chief Collins was sharing with me, so I had to write down a few things. Okay. Um, good evening. I'm Amy Butters, and I'm here representing the Ferndale School Board. And I just have just a few bits of information that I want to share with everybody tonight about what's going on in the schools. I've got six, six bits of information. Um, my first one is starting in the fall of 2015, Ferndale Schools is going to be offering a Montessori class, and there's already been some news out there about this program. Um, it's for kids ages 6 to 9, so those are kids in the first, second, and third grades, and they're going to... Um, you know that these are kids that have that come from a Montessori preschool background um, that are going to be that we're thinking are going to be interested in this program. Um, it's it's 
just kind of getting off the ground. And so there's been a few preliminary meetings. And so if anyone is interested in learning more about that, I can give you a phone number if, if you have a, a child that's in Montessori preschool program right now. And if, you're, if you might be interested in that as a first, second, or third grader, that phone number is 248-586-8657. And we're very excited about that partnership that's starting up. Um, my second point is some dates for you in January and February coming up that I think you will all be interested in. Um, they, these are a couple of open houses that we're having. On January 21st, it's a kindergarten open house for, for parents of incoming kindergartners that are interested in learning more about Ferndale schools. That'll be at Harding. And then on February 28th, we're having a district-wide open house. And every building in the district is going to be open. And you can come and tour the buildings and talk to the staff members and find out what's going on in Ferndale schools. So that's going to be February 28th. So that's for um, any, any prospective students. Now you might be wondering, OK, well, in years past, we've had our event called the Extravaganza, which has been sort of our district open house. Um, we're changing that up a little bit. The, the Extravaganza has been something that was combined with the All City Concert. We're keeping the All City Concert. And so that is still happening as it normally has. It's um, that last Saturday in January. Can somebody help me with that date? I'm not sure. If, I don't have it written down. Anybody know? We'll, we'll look that one up. 31st, thank 31st. you. <laughs> January 31st. So that is our all city concert, and that'll be in the gym up at Ferndale High School. So it'll be the same as how we've always done the all city concert. We just won't have the extravaganza part this year because we're having, we're changing that format and we're having it be a district open house in February at the different, at the other buildings. So those are some important dates for, for people out in the community. Um, our, my third point, Little Eagles Preschool GSRP, that stands for Great Start Readiness Program. It's a specific type of preschool program that we are offering at uh, Ferndale Schools. We had a new session start just this week, just this today. <laughs> Today's Monday. Just the, Today was the first day. And we still do have a few openings for that program, and that is a, a, an income-based program, and I have some numbers here. If you're a family of four and your income is $71,000 or below, you automatically qualify for this program. If you're above that, that amount, you might still qualify based on some other factors. So if you think that you might be interested in this program, if you have a preschooler that you think would fit in, I'll give you that phone number for, for that program, 248 Five eight six eight six eight six, and we do have a few openings for for that uh, preschool program. And that is housed in Harding, uh, Harding administration administration building. Okay, number four. Wanted to tell you I've mentioned to you before about our new honors program up at Ferndale High School, and this um, they just had a meeting to sort of really, really get it kicked off. They had the kids start on it in the summer, sort of a soft opening. Now we had sort of our real kickoff meeting um, just last week with the parents and the, and the students. This is for, for students that are in grades 9 through 12, and it's a comprehensive and enriched experience for students who are wanting to aim higher, uh, higher in academics. And it's a combination of academic and social and extracurricular uh, programming. And so we've got a lot of kids that are doing, doing, participating in that. And if you're interested in finding out more about that, you can go to our website. And there's a, there's a page on the academics page called SOAR Higher, SOAR hyphen higher. If you go to our website, you can learn more about our honors program. And it's a great way for kids to get a little bit more of a challenge if they're looking for something a little bit more challenging and also, you know, preparing for college, of course. Okay. Number five is, our robotics team at Ferndale High School recently learned that they received some money from the state to cover some of, the, some of their costs for their team. They got a $3,000 grant that covers their entry fee at their robotics competition and then a $1,500 teacher stipend. And so we're really excited that they've, they've got some, some money to, to help their program. They're going to be using it 
for equipment, of course, for their club, and also some, some travel to cover their travel expenses. And specifically to this, to this uh, group who's here tonight, I wanted, to, I wanted to mention that the Robotics Club is um, in need of some new mentors. Um, they have some openings. They, the, they depend a lot on, on community mentors that come in. They have teacher coaches, but they also have some, some volunteer mentors that come in and help them build their robot. And so if there's anybody out there um, who, would, who has the skills to offer, who maybe would be interested in helping our kids with that, it's, they're looking at um, people to help them you know, actually learn how to build the robot, people to help them manage their website, people to help them with programming, and also presentation. So those are some, some areas that they're looking for community mentors for. And so if there's anyone who's interested in that, I'll give you my email address and I can put you in touch with the, the right people. And my email address is amy.butters at ferndaleschools.org. Okay, and lastly, Coach Collins wanted to make sure that I, Coach Collins, Chief Collins, wanted to make sure that I mentioned that the Ferndale High School wrestling team won its first tournament. Was it last, over the weekend? Saturday, and, and so there were 18 teams that were there, and, and Ferndale came out on top, right? And so we're very proud of those wrestlers. I want to tell you the names of the six wrestlers that were champions that day. We had Devin Spear, Benny Buckner, Colby Davis, Colby Falls, Danny Collins, and one, one last one, Shamir. Borden. And so we want to congratulate those those young wrestlers because that's a that's a, a big achievement for them. Um, I think that's all I have if you have any questions. Any questions for Amy? Thank you. Okay, thank Good you. Good to see much. you. Thanks and for I that. I'm scooting Thanks. out. I told the others I cannot stay for the rest of the meeting. There is a Ferndale High School orchestra concert that's starting at seven thirty tonight over at the auditorium. So um, you know it's a busy time for our for our kids right okay. this season. So I'll be heading over there. Thanks. Thank you. Our next presentation is the Ferndale Arts and Cultural Commission. And I see a number of our Arts and Cultural Commission members here. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll kick this off. Um, Please. About a year ago, we uh, put an emphasis on reestablishing the Arts and Culture Commission and chartered a revitalized group to go forth and do a few things. And then we asked them to come back at the end of the year and report out how they've done. I'm very pleased to report that the amount of work that this group has done has been truly outstanding, as you'll see in this presentation. Uh, they've gone through a cycle of taking community feedback of the kinds of arts and interactions with arts and culture that we want to see in this community, on top of putting on a very aggressive number of events this year as well, uh, and have a very aggressive and impressive number of events for next year as well. So I'll turn it over uh, to um, Jeannie and Francine to, to go through their slide deck. Thank you. Um, about a year ago, we reformed the Ferndale Arts and Cultural Commission, and we all want to thank the mayor and the council for trusting us with this. We know it's a responsibility, and we're working hard to live up to that responsibility and make a good showing. So uh, we're looking at this point to increase the visibility of the Art Commission because nobody's heard of it for so long. So what we've been doing so far... Sure. <laughs> Okay, in January of two, 2014, we reinstituted the Ferndale Arts and Cultural Commission. And we, what we wanted to do was we wanted to take stock of the needs of the city in the area, areas of arts and cultural outreach and to bring uh, program development based on that assessment. We formed a team of um, appointees who include Tim Brennan, Mark Burton, Sharon Chess, Jeannie Davis, Francine Hatcham, Sherry Kuzman Martin, Wagner Whitehead, and Joanne Wilcock. Have I forgotten any of you? <laughs> so. It's a mighty group. We, we uh, did form a mission statement, and it is the mission of the Ferndale Arts and Cultural Commission to advise the city council of the artistic and cultural needs of the community, fostering arts programs and events that engage community members and local businesses building a vibrant cultural environment to the community of Ferndale. Damn, we sound good, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> so we did a public survey of uh, the residents of Ferndale. We did it over a period of a couple of months this summer. We wanted to see who wanted what. 
Um, people who wanted visual art formed a, a large section. People who wanted media, is that the black or is that performing? Performing. Performing. The largest amount wanted performing. And to break it down even a little further, or is it broke down further? Okay. To break it down a little further, almost everyone wanted an orchestra, and we've been working <laughs> on forming a band. The people who are in the know say a band is much easier uh, to do than an orchestra. We are, Sharon Chess and um, Joanne's brother Tim are working on putting together a band for us. Some of the other areas we've gone into are, um, we brought back music in the park. That was way high on the survey, it was to bring back music in the park and to accommodate the desire for visual arts, we've begun, um, we're beginning a gallery show in January to hang art at City Hall. One of the other things that we brought back, and this was the, the brainchild of Francine that we'd never tried before, was Salon Sundays. And I'm going to turn that over to Francine, <coughs> as well as music and Okay. Salon Sunday is something that it's a replica of the Paris salons with Gertrude Stein and Alice B. Toklas and all the artists in that time. We're, we're trying to recreate that atmosphere by once a month having an artist group come in, perform, and talk about their, their performing. We had a jazz group, uh, the Tom Dennis Trio was our first Sunday. Her second Sunday was Josh James Duo. And what they do is they tell us about their, about their craft. They talked about how to improvise with jazz. They open it up to the audience, and it was just a real nice conversation, and, and we're doing that. Next, in January, we're having Jay Kaplan, who's going to do a Broadway uh, cabaret. And then in February, we're having the cast of Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown to come and do their, their cabaret also. At, and we, we have them at Dino's. And um, we, we want to pay the, the, the entertainers because we feel it's very important that people do get paid for their work. A lot of times people think that we're having so much fun that we don't need to be paid. And so that's why we have concert in the park and we have salon Sundays. We're doing our best to pay these people and, and the performers so they, they, they do feel important. We had two concert, uh, music in the parks last year. We're going to go for four this year. And, um, we're doing, we're doing really well with the performing arts because that's what the, people want it. Um, and apparently we have a Facebook page. Uh, look for us at, <laughs> on Facebook. And apparently or actually? At the Ferndale uh, Arts and Cultural <laughs> Commission to find out what we're doing next. These are scenes from Music in the Park. We had Ray Dillaha and the Miracle Men. And it was very well received. Beforehand, Dan Martin and I went around and knocked on doors and had little flyers telling people in the area surrounding the park that we were going to be doing this and kind of apologizing for the noise ahead of time. And so many people were saying, oh, that's great. You're bringing that back. So we, and also to raise funds, we did two things. Um, well, I can't talk about one of the things. The other thing we did was we sold hot dogs and... <laughs> So now that's what we want to know about you now. <laughs> well, no, for yeah. donation. We'll <laughs> there you go. So, but we sold hot dogs, et cetera, and, and we raised money with that. And that was the other music in the park scenes from that. And these are scenes from Salon Sunday. That was Linda Pickley. Am I saying her name right? Yeah. And, and we had a very good, and Joshua James was in November. We deliberately aren't having one in December because everything else is going around. And again, to raise funds, we passed around the hat for these things. Mm -hmm. So what we have coming up in 2015, a lot of things have to be hinged on raising funds mm -hmm. because, you know, the money doesn't go on trees. And I seriously doubt the council is going to, uh, you know, move to write us a check. <laughs> So, Francine, I'm going to let you talk about the act of fun. I'll just take a minute to bring this on. It's like a bowl of fun or a walk of fun, but it's an act of fun, and it's 10 hours of acting. And we're putting it on February 7th, and we're trying to have 
we have the school board represented, we have the library board, we have the city council with Dan coming in, we have Sherry Wells as sergeant of arms. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but we are we are having different groups represented for that, and it's and, and it's a fundraiser, and we did it about ten years ago, and we made almost a thousand dollars. So we're hoping to double it or triple it this year. Um, but we are working on that, and uh, be looking for us to uh, knock on your door for five bucks. Gotcha. That's it. <laughs> We'll also be doing art displays at City Hall, as I mentioned earlier. Mark um, Mark Burton is Mark. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, do you want to? No, okay. He's wor he's working with Michael Leary uh, to to put that on, and Michael has been absolutely great. Because before Michael got involved, I didn't think it'd be possible. We're working on a Ferndale band, as I said. We'll have four music in the parks, as Francine said. Salon Sundays will be going ongoing, and again, this is uh, with the amazing help of um, Michael Leary. We're talking about doing a very small, a Ferndale-only artist art fair in the portico surrounding this building, and also we still have to give away two scholarships that we had gotten money for, and we so we're going to give them to a deserving student. Oh, that's it. Excellent. So again, I would just wrap up to say I think clearly this group succeeded the mandate we sent it out with. They've really done a terrific job, I think, with very limited resources and have been very creative and definitely, I think, added to the, the cultural, musical, and performing arts kind of offerings that we have in this city. So I think it's a welcome addition to be back. Here, here. Congratulations on a great year. Look forward to next year. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Uh, all right, our next presentation, is, uh, the Jack and the Annette Aronson Boys and Girls Club of Oakland County, which is the Ferndale unit of the Boys and Girls Club over at the Kulik Center, uh, is here just to update us on what's been happening over at the Boys and Girls Club. Brett Salander, good evening. Thank you, Mayor. It's uh, great to be with all of you tonight. It's, um, a lot has changed in here. I was looking at April, and I know she's going to be leaving soon, and something exciting happening in your life but something over this past year has been something that's been very powerful too which was the commitment that um, you guys led in coming to the Boys and Girls Club and seeing if we could create a partnership with the Boys and Girls Club and uh, being able to be present in the Kulik Center and being able to serve kids ages 6 to 18 years of age and there were good questions when we met a year ago to make sure that we did this in the right way and we're excited to let you know that um, our expectations have been exceeded in terms of who we're reaching um, by a multiplier of five. We have on any given day um, 60 to 70 kids who are now coming to the Boys and Girls Club at the Kulik Center. We dedicated that a year ago in honor of Jack and Annette Aronson who are really committed to this just recently. They purchased a whole lot of uh, cooking utensils because we have a great healthy lifestyles program and teaching kids to cook. And we've been really um, welcomed in the neighborhood. And for those of you who don't know, we opened here at the Royal o or at the uh, Ferndale Middle School and High School, and we were invited by a secretary who looked out at the window and saw kids sitting on the curb and with no place to go. And we started in 2005, and the partnership between the uh, Ferndale School District has been tremendous. The police department, Jill, has been outstanding um, in terms of being able to navigate and allow us to be able to serve the kids in this community in a significant way. And I don't know if I mentioned it, our annual membership fee is $25 a year. Mm -hmm. And um, we make sure that nobody has a difficulty in terms of um, getting over that hurdle. So often we're in a position to scholarship those programs. Um, I feel like every time in front, I'm in front of you, it's like old home week. I was a resident of Ferndale for mm -hmm. almost a decade and a half. and. So we mandated that our unit director had to live in Ferndale. Just kidding, but she does. <laughs> and um, Rachel Frank has a little bit to share with you this afternoon, this evening, about um, the programs here at the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, yeah. Good to see you, Rachel. Good to see you, too. Um, so a little bit, I know Brett talked that we've more than tripled our attendance even since opening last year. Um, so that's been amazing. And some of our most popular programs right now that the that we get the most members in attendance is our cooking for sure. I mean, it is a competitive time to get into that kitchen and make some real things, not just cooking up or boiling up some pasta or anything. They're making quality stuff and, and things that they can take home and maybe 
make a little snack for themselves or a meal for their family. So that's incredibly popular. So can we from competitively come eat? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have competitive eating, uh, um, but, we, but we, they definitely like to share. Um, but to get in that door, it's it's uh, it's competitive again, and it's our six to eighteen year olds are in that kitchen. Um, together learning from one another, so that's incredibly popular. Um, we also have uh, our teen basketball program that is very popular among our teens. Uh, we also have Power Hour, which is where club members can come in and get some academic assistance. And if they don't have any homework to do, we have a ton of academic games um, or different activities to kind of support them in their you know, work as they're trying to increase their their academic potential. And we also have a tutoring program as well. Uh, if you are interested in being a tutor, please come contact us at the club. Um, the club number is 248-990-3978. Um, you can also find us online. Uh, if you want some more information, you can also pop by. But that is, we are looking for, for tutors to, to increase our tutoring program because that is one of our most effective um, academic programs, absolutely. Um, Brett already talked about our membership fee, $25 for the year for our members. And um, with our increased attendance, we have um, recently capped, met our capacity for teens currently. Uh, so that's ages 13 to 18. And then we're looking, it should open up again in March uh, to, have some, to have some flexibility there. Uh, but yeah, we have great members attending regularly. And it's, I know Brett already said it, but it has been a dream uh, working with Jill and with the city and everything is just you know, it really works well, and I'm a happy camper and so, so happy to be a part of this. So. Glad to hear that. Um, one of the benefits, I've been the director for coming up on 15 years this coming year, and one of the benefits is having the opportunity to see a young man like this grow up at the club. And I remember Mike Lennon's dad, Bernie, being a tremendous supporter of the Boys and Girls Club from its inception. And I want to have you have the opportunity to hear from Antoine. Antoine, I remember when he was just little guy, but the thing that has not changed is the smile. <laughs> he always lights up a room, and he is on our staff now as a Boys and Girls Club alum and is on staff, and I was sitting over there, and I said, do you have anything you want to share? So that's the notice he got, and, um, <laughs> but we're glad to have him here to share with you tonight. Antoine, welcome. Um, so, yeah, I'm Antoine Duro. I've been going to Boys and Girls Club for like six, seven years, middle school through high school, and I can honestly say the Boys and Girls Club is – a very positive place to go like it shows you that there's better opportunities out there instead of just being in the streets and getting yourself into trouble so you can come to a place where you can figure out yourself figure out the things that you like figure out what career you want to get into and then you have wonderful staff like Brett and Rachel <laughs> to help you do that they, it's like there's a family it's a place to go like a second home like, if you have nowhere if like if there's some children out there that not really stable at the house they can always come to the club where it's just nothing but different types of children and different staff members just there to overwhelm you with fun and love, basically. Yeah, so it's, I'm happy to be a part of Boys and Girls Club, and I know my journey don't stop from here. I know they will always have my back growing up. When I have my family, I can send my children to the Boys and Girls Club. Excellent. Just going on process. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that, man. And just in closing, and I don't know if there's any questions uh, that need to be answered tonight, and we're ready to do that as well, but the um, powerful piece is to be able to see kids, the commitment that was made at this table to reach kids ages 6 to 18, the powerful partnership we had with the school district worked for a long time. It mattered. Um, we were able to reinvest $125,000 in college scholarships into students in Ferndale. But the opportunity to be able to serve kids under the age of 13 that, or 12 that don't attend the middle school and the high school allows us to reach them younger. And we know that if a kid is reading at grade level at age uh, in the fourth grade, we know they're likely to graduate. We know all of the factors that allow that to happen. So I just want to thank you for your leadership and your commitment to the youth and the community. And if there's any way that we can um, strengthen what we're doing, we're always open to um, suggestions. So Excellent. thank you. Great. Any questions of counsel? Mm -hmm. No. No. Thank you. No, Good appreciate work. you coming Good tonight, work. and yeah, congratulations on the success. Appreciate it very much. Uh, excellent. Our final presentation this evening is our Downtown Development Authority, and of course, being December, there's always lots of things going on in our downtown, and Christina is...
here to tell us about them. Final things for the week, basically. <laughs> so first I want to say thank you to everyone who came out to the Holiday Ice Festival this past Saturday. It was great turnout. Um, the weather was really good for people to come out. It wasn't so good for the ice sculptures to stay very long, um, but uh, it was great to see them why, why they were here. Um, and I want to give a, a big shout out to the big man himself, Santa, because he was there all day and did a great job. And uh, we we had, I think we clicked over 700 photos. So, so he did a lot of photos uh, that day. Um, and I do want to uh, mention that photos are up online and are, are available for people to download now or if they would like to order their prints right from uh, the site, uh, which is uh, downtownferndale.shutterfly.com. You can get to that link easily uh, as well through our website and also our Facebook posting too. And our website is downtownferndale.com. Uh, we also are selling, or still selling, uh, our uh, little ornament uh, for the year. Uh, we kicked this off with Holiday Hoof, and we still have some left in our office, as well as uh, they are available at Blooms by JR Designs, uh, State of the Art, Framing and Gallery, and Just for Us. They are $5, so uh, nice little uh, stocking stuffer if you'd like to pick one up. Um, and then last but not least, uh, I want to mention that we have our Merry Moonlight Madness this Thursday. Uh, we have uh, quite a few of our retailers that will be open late. Uh, so it's uh, late night, ladies night, and late date shopping. So get out there, get your last uh, items off of your list, have a lot of fun while doing it because many of our businesses who do participate also make it a lot of fun when you go in. Um, and many are going to be open until 9 o'clock, but it is up to them as to what time they'll be um, open. So just kind of uh, inquire when you are out and about. Uh, we will have all the information posted on our website and on the Facebook page as well. Uh, thanks again for everybody for this holiday season. It has definitely been a big, strong one for our businesses. Uh, we've seen great success um, starting with Small Business Saturday and uh, now through the Holiday Ice Festival. I want to keep that going. I want to wish uh, Sherilyn best of luck in uh, the next adventure in life. Thank <laughs> and, you. And um, also uh, everybody, a because uh, I'm sure I will not see you before that uh, unless I pass you in the streets, uh, Happy New Year, and we look forward to 2015. Excellent. Thank you. Anyone have questions of Christina while she's here? No. All right. Thank you. Um, I said there were only four presentations, but we actually have a sneaky fifth presentation that we would like to, to put in here if you don't mind, if you would indulge counsel. And, and April, are you going to introduce that? Uh, actually, Michael has some stuff for you. Oh, Michael. <laughs> oh, you didn't let me do that. Thank you. Okay. So it's become a little bit of an annual, or not an annual tradition, a tradition around here that when people that we love leave us, we want to shower them with a little bit of love. So first of all, I will, I will have a proclamation that I would like to read. Because if you haven't heard, at our last meeting I think we announced uh, that Sherilyn is going to be leaving the employee of the city of Ferndale to move on to greater adventures in Milwaukee, of all places. And we wish her great luck, uh, great luck there. So let me read the proclamation first. And it says uh, that I, Mayor David Coulter, on behalf of the Ferndale City Council, extends the city's appreciation to Sherilyn Brown for her dedicated service as city clerk from 2007 to 2014. Sherilyn has served the city with enthusiasm and efficiency throughout her tenure as city clerk. Her integrity and commitment to excellence is evident in her work. Her accomplishments as city clerk are too numerous to list, but include improving the election process, implementing electronic council packets, streamlining licensing and processes, and initiating the transition to a more digital city clerk's office. Sherilyn Brown is a credit to our community, and it is with heartfelt appreciation that we celebrate her achievement and thank her for seven years of committed service to the residents of Ferndale. We will miss her engaging personality, her positive attitude, her unflagging professionalism, and we wish her well in all her future endeavors. Thank um, you. <laughs> Cold in Milwaukee, so you'll need a Ferndale sweatshirt for one and other gifts as well. Thank so. you very much. Can 
I just say a couple words? Of course you may. <laughs> I've said it before, and I'll say it again. It has been a pleasure and a privilege to work for this and former councils. Um, I, I had a whole bunch of things I wanted to say, but I won't make it. Um, it's hard to leave. Um, this has been the best job I've ever had. It's been the most challenging. I've had the most support from the most wonderful group of people. Um, the professionalism I have learned from them. Um, and not just council, but um, the citizens, the businesses here. It has been so fun getting to know everyone and working with everyone here. I know Craig Covey kept saying when I was hired that he just knew I was going to be fun. Um, <laughs> and, and it really has been fun to work here. Um, and just, I also just have to say that one of the, the best things council ever did for this city um, was hiring April Lynch as our city manager. She has... <laughs> She has moved us into the next phase of forward progress um, and has accomplished so much and put such a great management team together. Um, we really do work well, and it's very hard to leave them. So I feel like I've accomplished a lot here, so I, I leave feeling proud of what I've done, um, and I also leave just a, a better more experienced person and, and ready to take on whatever challenges come my way. Thank you all. Thank you. All right, now it's your turn. This is called the audience. This is uh, your opportunity uh, to address council on any issue that's not on the agenda because we'll give you an opportunity to speak to those items when we get to them. Uh, three minutes, uh, give us your name and your address and address council on anything that you would like. If I may wear two hats tonight, and the first hat is the senior hat. Um, thanks to the ice festival on Saturday, we seniors were able to sell cookies at Dino's once again, even though there's no contest anymore, but there were no rules for us to break, so that was fine. <laughs> So th this year, as you know, we do a different cause every year, and this year was to donate to the Elks Club for the Hanging with the Heroes program to send things to the soldiers. And I'm really tickled to say that we seniors raised $470 for that. Oh, yeah. yeah. All the ladies sat there all day at Dino's, and as usual, Virginia and I went up and down the street and inside the bars and collected from the bars. And i got to say something. Nobody is more generous than a day drinker. That is just my <laughs> We collected 60 bucks in Danny's. <laughs> and uh, for my other hat, I would like to report on the um, historic home tour that we had on Saturday. Uh, I worked on it. Uh, Gary Andrews, of course, is the president, and Gary Andrews and Greg Pollacka and myself, we worked on it. We have five of the most spectacular homes, and every single one of our homeowners was absolutely into it. If you ate your way from home to home, you'd gain 10 pounds during it, right? <laughs> but, and the homes were just exquisite. Our sponsors were absolutely great. We had some very generous sponsors. So it turned out that we made a very nice profit. So it turned out into a, a wonderful evening, and I think that's so good for Ferndale. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. Good evening. Hello, my name is Christy Faulkner. I'm here with the Ferndale Association of Invested Residents, and I would like to make an announcement that we have joined together with the Renaissance Vineyard Church on a food and clothing drive. So today was the first day of the drive. Um, we're asking for people to submit donations of non-perishable food items as well as warm winter clothing that will be passed out during the um, warming center that the church will be hosting January 1st through the 12th. Um, some items that are of particular need, obviously winter coats. Winter is upon us. I know it's kind of warm out today, but winter will be coming. And um, some other items that people might not normally think of, socks, underwear, things of that nature, to hand out to the people that will be visiting the warming center. Um, if you would like to make a donation of 
either clothing or the non-perishable food items. You can drop them off at the Renaissance Vineyard Church, which is located at 1841 Pinecrest Drive. Um, if you have any questions about the donations, you can also call the church at 248-545-4664. Um, a, a couple of other opportunities as well. During the Warming Center, which is January 1st through the 12th, we're also, sub, um, sorry, we're also accepting donations of fresh fruit, <coughs> things that could be handed out and easily taken at breakfast time. So um, if you're interested in dropping off any fresh fruit or things of that nature, you can deliver them January 1st through the 11th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. But otherwise, um, this week we will be collecting Today was our first day. Tomorrow you can drop off between 10 and 7 p.m. at Renaissance Vineyard Church. And then Wednesday and Thursday from 10 to 4 p.m. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Paul Kish, 707 West Hazelhurst. This binder, along with its 31 exhibits, is also slated to be heard by the State of Michigan on January 12, 2015, alongside the reference file that I presented this council on November the 10th. I'm going to leave that as is. I wish you all a Merry Christmas. Same to you, sir. Same to you. Anyone else like to address council this evening? Good evening. Good evening. Hello, my name is Robert Meacham. I'm here to discuss opening a tattoo shop, uh, Twin Fish Tattoo. I've been in contact with Ms. Uh, Lynch um, today and over the past weeks. Um, so I'm renting a suite in the McColl building across the parking lot and I've run into a location requirement issue. I just want to present a few arguments. Um, in favor of the location of my tattoo shop. Um, the location requirements of the ordinance regulating body art salons, um, according to my research, are not relevant to the overall purpose statement, which is to protect um, the health and general welfare of uh, citizens who have spread of disease transmitted through the use of needles and body piercing equipment. However, um, the location of the tattoo shop within the 500 foot radius of the protected buildings doesn't mean that the patrons will necessarily come in contact with any needles. Um, therefore, it, uh, it appears to be uh, based on um, old prejudices against body art. Uh, for example, uh, the tattoo shop uh, currently operating across the street um, in closer proximity than the one I plan to open. Um, to my knowledge, there have been no complaints regarding the health and safety of library patrons. My situation is specific. Um, you cannot see my tattoo shop from, from the library or from the pu any public space. It's inside the McColl building. Um, it has no windows, just a door. Um, it's temporary, one year. Um, Part-time appointment only services by me alone. Um, clientele includes only my friends, family, and referral from my friends and family. Um, some potential solutions that came to mind uh, when reviewing the ordinances um, by simply removing library from the uh, uh, section 7397 of the ordinance, um, not only will it make my proximity um, acceptable, but also the tattoo gallery across the street will no longer be in violation of the location requirements. Um, perhaps issue a temporary waiver, the Twin Fish Tattoo, to operate for one year. Um, and lastly, um, amend the distance requirements to, to the, in the ordinance to less than 89 feet. That's all. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. And I'll, I'll just maybe say to the city manager, I, I believe I'm not the only one on council. This is probably the first time I've heard of this issue, but if you could maybe just draft a brief memo for us about the background and maybe address some of his potential issues for us, that would be great. Thank you for Thank your, you very much. Thank you for your time tonight. Thanks. Anyone else like to address council this evening? All right. Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, consent agenda items are those that council views as routine and we enact in one motion unless council pulls something from the consent agenda. Uh, however, the public will be allowed to speak to them if they like, uh, but let me read them now. Item A is the approval of the minutes of the regular and special meetings held November 24th, 2014. 
Item B is the approval to reappoint Doug Werner to the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority for a term ending December 31st, 2017, and Kate Baker and Kevin Petrano, Petrano to the Planning Commission for terms ending December 31st, 2017, as submitted by our Community and Economic Development Director. Item C is the approval of the $10,509 quote from Commerce Controls for the purchase and installation of software upgrades to the OIT computer at the Hilton Road pumping station to be charged to the Water and Sewer Fund Repair and Maintenance Account. Item D is the approval of $243,000 bid by MK Painting of Wyandotte for maintenance and miscellaneous improvements to the 3 million gallon water storage tank to be charged to the Water Sewer Fund Capital Account. Item E is the approval to authorize the mayor to sign the amendment to the engagement letter with Plant Moran for the services of the finance director slash treasurer for an additional $25,000 from approximately January 1st, 2015 to June 30th, 2015 for the specific purpose of a transition from the new world systems to BSNA financial software. Uh, item F is the approval of a special event permit for the 2015 Arts at City Hall from January 15, 2015 to November 30th, 2015. Item G is the approval of a special event permit for the BB Barbecue Rib Burnout Number 8, hard to believe, on Saturday, January 31st, 2015 from noon to 6 p.m. Item H is the approval of the soft of the software as a service agreement with Seamless Docs for a one-time project cost not to exceed $8,500 and an ongoing annual cost of $4,950 will, will be proportionately distributed amongst the, the accounts noted. Item I is the approval to fill a police lieutenant position. Item J is the approval to pay an invoice from W.W. W. Williams for $3,615.05 for the repair of E11-4 as submitted by our fire chief. And finally, the approval of the bills and payroll submitted by the city manager's office subject to the review of our council finance committee. What is the pleasure of council on the consent agenda this evening? I move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Support. Moved by Piana and supported by Martin. Is there any discussion on the consent agenda, either by council or members of the public? All right, seeing none, Cheryl Lynn, would you call the roll, please? Council members Martin? Yes. Pollica? Yes. Piana? Yes. Mayor Coulter? Yes, thank you. The consent agenda is adopted. Uh, moving on to the regular agenda, I item A is the consideration to appoint a provisional district library board members. So, um, Dan, are you going to introduce that item? I'm certainly happy sure. to. Sure. Okay. Uh, you'll recall several months ago, uh, the city uh, elected to participate in a district library agreement, uh, which uh, was authorized under yep. the District Library Establishment Act, uh, and uh, uh, together with the Ferndale Public Schools, uh, along with the. Uh, consent or, or, or approval of the Ferndale Library, uh, created the Ferndale District Library and entered into a district library agreement. Uh, that agreement provided that the initial provisional library board would be appointed by the city. Uh, so by the current, it's my understanding that the uh, state librarian has approved the district library agreement that the parties entered. And uh, so under the agreement, the city has the uh, prerogative to appoint the initial uh, board members, provisional board members to that. Uh, and before you this evening is uh, uh, a uh, proposed slate uh, for your consideration. All right. And I see our library director here uh, this evening. Do you want to come up and just sort of maybe, I, I know Dan mentioned about the, the state approval, but just talk a little bit about what's happened over the course of the last month before we get to this. <laughs> Don't mean to put you on the spot, but. No, that's all right. <laughs> uh, well, we received good news. The state librarian, Randy Riley, did approve our district library agreement with no changes. So we are all set to officially transition to become the Ferndale Area District Library in partnership with the city of Ferndale and the Ferndale Public Schools, effective December 31st. So um, I believe the proposed slate is our current sitting library board which is Pat Dengate, Judine Bartos, Monique Herzig, 
Tiffany Gagne, Frank Castronova, and who am I forgetting? Adrian Gilmore. Adrian Gilmore yeah. And then um, part of the District Library Establishment Act is that there are actually seven board members. So um, the seventh candidate on the slate is Kevin Yesbick, who is here with us today. And Kevin, and you want to just come on up and introduce yourself? We'd love to have a chance to say hi. Kevin has volunteered for the library in many capacities over the years. He was the president of the Friends Group at one point, and he's been serving on our Building and Finance Committee for several years now, and he is also a professional librarian, so he lends a lot of great knowledge and experience to everything we do. Truly does. Hi, Hi Kevin Yazvik, live over on Silman Street. Um, I've been in the public library world for 10 years, and I recently took a different career path. I'm still using my library skills, but now I'm working for Rock Ventures. Um, and I just wanted to continue to contribute to the community and contribute to the library world. So when uh, I was given notice that they were looking for a seventh member of the board, I was happy to put name, my name forward. I've been in contact with Mayor Coulter. Yep. Um, but I'm looking forward to this opportunity. Excellent. Thanks. All right. Is there any uh, comments or questions of council? I move to confirm the appointments of Judine Bartos, Frank Castronova, Patrick Dungate, Tiffany Gagne, Adrian Gilmore, Monique Herzig, and Kevin Yesbick to the Provisional Library Board for the Ferndale Area District Library. Support. All right. Moved by Piana and supported by Paulica. Um, Dan, remind me, how long does the Provisional Board sit? Uh, Your Honor, it, it uh, sits until the... Uh, next school election, uh, which I'm not sure when that is. I believe it's 2016. 2016. Yes. November of 2016? Yes. Correct. Okay. Yep. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on this item? Congratulations on the district library, I would add. Thank All you right. very much. Sherlyn, would you call the roll, please? Council members Pollica? Yes. Kiana? Yes. Lennon? Yes. Martin? Yes. Mayor Coulter? Yes. Thank you. Uh, that board is uh, confirmed. Moving on to the next item of business, which is a consideration of a recommendation to appoint the city clerk. And April, do you want to introduce that item? Yes, please. Um, as you know, as we talked about earlier today, Sherilyn has tendered her resignation here with the city of Ferndale, which leaves open her position. At the last meeting, council did authorize the permission to fill that open position. And with that, um, this is a unique position in the fact that council actually has the appointing authority just as they do with me and um, Dan Christ. So it's actually council's decision on who the next clerk is. Um, I actually went ahead and made a recommendation. Uh, Marnie McGrath has been the deputy clerk for almost five, over five years now. Um, you know her well. Um, she's you know, participated in a lot of the things that we do here. She is uh, qualified for the position. She's a great part of our team. Um, she has the, she's actually also completed the Master Academy for Clerks um, of Michigan. Uh, she is um, very, very qualified to fill that position. And it would be my recommendation that we take a look at putting Marnie in that position. Um, if we were to do that, I would recommend a three-month review and a six-month review to ensure that 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 fit works well within um, what the council is looking for. Uh, it is to be noted that, that this is your choice, and if you'd like to go out, we can do that as well. But that would be my recommendation. And before we go out and recruit, I wanted to, to bring that forward. Thank you. I would like to move that we promote that we promote and appoint Marnie McGrath as the city clerk for the city of Ferndale, effective January 1st, 2015. Support. Moved by Martin and supported by Paulica. Comments? Questions? Good choice. <laughs> No-brainer. <laughs> I, I, I do have one comment in relation to this. I think Marnie yeah. is absolutely the right choice for this job, and we're so lucky to have her, as much as I hate seeing Sherilyn go. Um, you know, I think she's going to do fantastic work, but I'm going to offer a subsequent motion after this that for department head recruitment in the future, we look both internally and externally. I don't have any qualms about this decision here today with Marnie here. Um, I don't know of any imminent department head vacancies, so I think now's the time to set that direction. Mm -hmm. well, we can make them any time we want. What? Vacancies. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's so, almost Christmas. Yeah, yeah, I know. That yeah. fun. Not bearing on this motion, yeah. but I'm going to have one that follows. All right. right. Yeah. Um, I do have a question about finding a deputy clerk, mm -hmm. um, and would the hiring process be the same for uh, the regular city clerk? 
It would be a little different um, just based on the position alone that, that would fall under my jurisdiction. But what we're doing actually as we do with all open positions, we're taking this as a 90-day period to take a look at what the city really needs. Anytime we have a vacancy, we stop and go, is this position really what we need? Obviously, the clerk's position is unique in the fact that it's we required by law. Required. Yes, required by law. <laughs> and there's so many uh, you know parts of that that just make it a no-brainer. It's hard to contract that out or anything like that. So we are taking this opportunity with Marnie's skill sets as well to take a look in that take a look at how that fits best within the city and what our needs are um, but we will be filling that position in some capacity but it won't be probably until I come back from maternity leave okay um, first of all I, I do think it's a no-brainer and we're lucky to have Marnie here and we've all worked with her very closely and uh, so I have no no reservations at all about making Marnie our city clerk. Um, I do support the notion, though, that going forward um, at the department head level, we should we should probably create that as a policy or or a motion, and and I'm supportive of that. So um, and I agree that this is a good time to do it because I'm not aware of anybody that's leaving. So um, I hope not. that's a <laughs> no, we've got a great team. It's not a reflection of a wonderful anybody. team, and that's policy. I'm comfortable supporting Marnie and uh, happy to support her. Sherlyn, would you like to call the roll, please? I would love to. Council members Piana? Yes. Lennon? Yes. Martin? Yes. Paulica? Yes. Mayor Coulter? Yes. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. And I would like to move that the City of Ferndale adopt a recruitment policy in relation to vacant department head positions, that the recruitment process would include a search of both internal and external uh, candidates. I support. Uh, is there discussion? Uh, do we need to put that? I guess that will come down as a resolution, but that does that need to go that into some sort of employee procedures or anything? Yeah, I'll make sure that Jenny is aware of that as we move forward, that it's put in, um, <coughs> in a procedure. Okay. Yeah, employee handbook procedure okay. policy. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Other comments or questions? Sherilyn, would you call the roll? Council members Lennon? Yes. Martin? Yes. Polica? Yes. Piana? Yes. Mayor Coulter? Yes. Thank you. Uh, that motion is uh, adopted. Moving on to regular agenda item C is the consideration of a special event permit for a menorah display at the Kulik Community Center. And April, are you going to introduce that? Or is, oh, oh, Joe, I'm sorry. Yes, Joe's that. going to introduce that. Mayor and Council. Yeah. On December 3rd, um, we were approached by Rabbi Herschel Finman with a request to erect a menorah on public property and conduct a, a Hanukkah lighting ceremony. He is in attendance tonight, and I think I'd like to let him speak more to uh, his event and what he's requesting. Okay, that'd be great. Rabbi? Rabbi, could you come up? <laughs> come on up. And the microphone does go up, because I see <laughs> you're a tall gentleman. That's right. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Good evening. Thank you for offering me the opportunity to speak. My name is Rabbi Herschel Finman. I shop, <coughs> play, visit, broadcast a radio show, teach classes, and hope to sometime in the near future live in Ferndale. Go former Governor Grantholm referred to Ferndale as a cool city. And looking around and walking the streets, we see that it indeed is a cool city. Coolness implies inclusiveness and tolerance, appreciation for what others do. The menorah is a symbol of religious freedom. It is one which is, when seen, lets the viewer understand that this neighborhood, where this menorah is, is one of tolerance, freedom, liberty, the pursuit of joy and justice. What we propose is a 13-foot high aluminum electric menorah be, pay, be placed in front of the Kulik Center for the period of Hanukkah, just prior to, meaning tomorrow, <laughs> until just after and since that it is that the day after is the 25th and things will be closed then the take it down the 26th and that each day another candle of the menorah be lit 
so as to show an increase in light. And where there is an increase in light, there's an increase in empowerment, there's an increase of, of awareness, there's an increase that people can get together. On the last night of the holiday, we would like to have a, a get together and I would like to offer an invitation to the mayor to be the speaker at this event on six o'clock in front of the Kulik Center to address the crowd, hopefully, along with um, refreshments. The menorah is officially being sponsored by Hazano Coffee and uh, Frank has very much uh, stepped up to the plate as a, as a dedicated member of the Chamber of Commerce here, the Downtown Authority. He's been very, very, very helpful and very excited about this. And I cannot but anything but urge the City Council to adopt re the recommendation that the menorah be allowed to be erected and this function be allowed to take place. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Um, is there anyone from the, um, from the audience who's here to speak on this item, by the way? I should give you the opportunity now. Good evening. Hello, my name is Pat Sissel. I live in Ferndale and Withington. And I just wanted to um, piggyback on what the rabbi has said. Um, I brought this before council in 2003 in terms of nativity scenes being allowed on city property. We used to have a nativity scene, a Star of David, a menorah, uh, Santa Claus and a few other secular items possibly, I don't remember what they were, on City Hall property. And um, at one time the city sponsored very tall nativity items in the median until the Department of Transportation said that was not allowed and they were moved here. Um, back in 2003, um, in fact I've got the article that was written by on the Tribune by um, uh, Mr. O'Connell on the city council vote and it had been referred at that time to uh, De, um, Dan Chris to investigate mm -hmm. the uh, laws uh, in, that are now unfortunately um, around any kind of religious freedom of expression on private or city prop or public or pro um, city property. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a couple things I could refer to if anybody wanted to investigate the laws, but the laws do state uh, the United States uh, Constitution, or excuse me, the uh, Supreme Court has ruled <coughs> under the uh, Lemon v. Kurtzman Act uh, case that they were allowed to um, present um, any religious uh, displays because our Constitution allows us freedom of, not from religion, but of religion and it's not to favor a particular faith. Um, it also mentions having some secular items mixed in the display. A lot of people have some confusion as to what maybe a Christian item would be, thinking a garland or red or green lights or a Christmas tree would be it. Um, traditionally, nativity scenes, crushes uh, with Jesus Christ as uh, his birth um, being commemorated at that time of year um, would be a Christian symbol. Um, at that time, I believe uh, they gave our nativity scene to St. James Church to be presented over there where they felt it was a more appropriate location in a Christian setting. Um, but the laws do state that we may have um, uh, faith symbols um, on city property mm -hmm. and we just have to follow the lemon test, basically. Um, and if you want, I have a few other items I could, you know, refer you to to look up. But at that time, um, our attorney, Dan Christ, had decided not to do uh, allow the uh, items on city um, property, which the Kulik Center is also part of that. And that was one of the items was if it's, we didn't want to have it on Nine Mile to move it over there. And uh, that was one of my points was that's not really central to our city celebrations. We light up Nine Mile and now um, since that time the budget was not there uh, but now we are lit up like well a Christmas tree as some would say. Uh, quite a few out there but at the time there wasn't the money to purchase a nativity scene um, that would be more uh, current. So I, I would propose that um, we do allow uh, our 
constitutional rights and under the First Amendment and allow our um, menorahs and um, nativity scenes um, with secular items to be placed and celebrate all of our particular um, choices of religious um, display that we have a right to do as citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public that would like to speak on this item? Sure. <laughs> You're fighting over who wants to go. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Gay Tischler. I live at 430 West Troy. My husband is Frank Castronova, by the way. Oh. <laughs> so I'd throw that in. <laughs> this should really be a no-brainer. There is more of a Jewish presence um, in Ferndale. I'm Jewish. My, my husband is also. He'd be here tonight. be at a work-related event. And um, I just think it would be a lovely thing to see. I'd love to see it downtown, you know, Christmas decorations. Maybe that'll happen another year. Thought this would be a great way to kick it off. Thanks. That's it. Thanks, Thank you. Gage. Appreciate it. Yeah, sure, come on up. Good evening. Hi. I'm Hannah Finman. That was my husband, and <laughs> that was my friend. <laughs> um, thanks. Just a couple words. Um, I've been privileged to attend these public menorah um, happenings in many places. Um, the most interesting one is in Philadelphia by the Liberty Bell. And I used to be you know, behind the scenes to make that happen many years ago now. It's, um, and of course, down in the White House, it's done. Um, but I've done this in Perth, Australia. I've done this even in um, Wayne State University for three years in a row. And one of the nicest things that we did down there just last year was the Wayne State um, Glee Club. Not one member was Jewish. Learned all the Hanukkah songs in Yiddish and Hebrew. <laughs> and it was just really beautiful. And a lot of people came. And um, it's just a very warm, inviting thing that anybody can really come and enjoy and be inspired to do some, something of light and unity, which are the themes of Hanukkah for any neighbor. So that's the idea. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? So maybe at this point, um, uh, and Pat Sissel brought up the legal aspects of this, Dan, maybe it would be appropriate for you to just give counsel some guidance in terms of what the law does say around this sure. issue. Uh, I'd be happy to, Mayor and Council. Uh, and uh, you really, the starting point is the First Amendment, and it does provide uh, in part that Congress shall not uh, establish uh, uh, any law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. And, and uh, Ms. Sissel referenced uh, an earlier opinion, uh, I think 2003 is correct, uh, that uh, uh, addressed the issue of a city uh, uh, nativity scene that was placed. Uh, and uh, the opinion uh, based on the Supreme Court cases was that uh, that city a nativity scene uh, was uh, uh, an issue that could be construed as a violation uh, of the First Amendment by an endorsement uh, of a particular religion. Uh, the cases that are referenced in that opinion uh, reference the Lemon Test, which is, is still the law as it relates to the uh, three-part test that's analyzed on that. Uh, and then I reference the Allegheny case, uh, which, which talked about uh, uh, a crush at the center or uh, uh, what is viewed as the center of, of government. And in that case, uh, the Supreme Court struck down the crush uh, that was in the city of in, in City Hall, uh, but in that case allowed a menorah because it viewed that that menorah as being a secular symbol because it was next to a, uh, a Christmas tree. Uh, and the recommendation that was provided to council back in 2003 was that the city should not be involved in putting forth a particular uh, display that advocated uh, any particular religion. Uh, what is before you this evening is a different issue, and it's a uh, application by a individual who is wishing to uh, exercise his rights uh, and 
rights afforded to him under the Constitution of free speech. Uh, it does go back, though, and it's still subject to the Lemon Test, which, which uh, you know, is a, is a uh, weighty case of the Supreme Court, and there's a lot of uh, factors that go into the consideration of that. But, it, you know, the, the basic part is, you know, is there a secular purpose? Does it have a principal effect of advancing religion? And is it uh, uh, foster an excessive entanglement between government and religion? And I think what's instructive for, for counsel is to consider some of the, the recent cases that have uh, interpreted uh, that test and applied that test. And uh, the Sixth Circuit, which is uh, the circuit that is binding uh, on Michigan uh, in the case of Americans United for Separation of Church and State versus the City of Grand Rapids, which was a 92 case, in that case uh, upheld, uh, uh, despite a protest, uh, the City of Grand Rapids allowance of a menorah on a city park. Um, and then more recently, uh, just 2012, the Sadawa versus a Macomb County Road Commission case, which was a, a, a crash scene, a nativity scene. Uh, in that case, the uh, district court, federal district court judge was overruled by the Sixth Circuit uh, when, when Macomb County Road Commission determined not to allow a nativity scene in the median of Mound Road. A and what is uh, appropriate to be considered in this is, is whether uh, the proposed location constitutes a public forum. Uh, is it a place where people uh, have uh, come to, to congregate, to, to sit, to meet, to talk? Uh, and I think certainly an argument could be made that uh, the Kulik Center uh, does fit within uh, a, a public forum uh, for purposes of, of speech. Um, and uh, some of the other issues as it relates to uh, in, in previous cases is, is there any type of message of secularism uh, or secular message that's out there? Uh, the rabbi did note uh, in his opening mark, remarks about uh, uh, the lights being uh, uh, to promote the tolerance, uh, freedom, liberty, uh, I missed one word, and justice. Uh, and uh, certainly that those items would appear to be a secular uh, a message. Um, and uh, the location at the Kulik Center also is not at the heart or center of city government, which, which uh, lessens uh, the suggestion that a reasonable observer, which is the test, would uh, construe this to be an endorsement by the city. Is there differentiation in some of those previous cases where it was actually public tax dollars, though, expended to put those nativity scenes up versus well, not? Well, yes, in the context of not necessarily public dollars, but, but establishment by the government. It was Whether it's a city display, whether it is a city... City-owned uh, display, is that what you're saying? That's not the only test. Okay. It, it, it can be considered a, a government-sponsored display, even if it's not... Uh, 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 owned necessarily by by the government. Dan, um, excuse me, through the chair. Um, so, if there is a privately owned nativity scene out there, or some other religious um, artifact, um, they could go through the proper procedures at City Hall here with the application fee and all that, and place it up at the police center this year. That is that is correct. It would go through the same analysis right. and the private applicant in that circumstance uh, would uh, be able uh, to, to make an argument as to why his, uh, his or her uh, exercise of, of a message, uh, religious messages are, are entitled to First Amendment protection just like non-religious messages, right. uh, as to whether or not that's appropriate location. Now, that being said, uh, e even if the First, First Amendment doesn't, doesn't stand for the proposition that somebody can speak uh, as long as they want in any capacity that they want, and so as long as it's content neutral, g local government and governments, uh, uh, all governments, have the right to, uh, in, uh, to provide and, and implement 
reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions as it relates to its property. It has to be content neutral. Like our three-minute rule at, at council. So you can say it's three minutes, you just can't say what you can say, right? Well, that's the equivalent, or? It's, uh, that, <laughs> or not, it's a, a am I stretch of an analogy. I'm, I'm but stretch, I, yeah. All right. Anyway. Dan, a couple of questions for you. Yes. So lights like we have outside of the building now, are, are those, it, it, my understanding is that those are considered secular, so that is not really part of this discussion? Yes. Okay. And, and but then you, you started to sort of make the, the case that the good rabbi was making that maybe a menorah is secular. Have the courts no. weighed in on whether a menorah is secular or religious? No, I, I think that uh, most of, of the case law would say that a menorah is, is not secular uh, in and of itself. But some of the other cases, uh, uh, they're, uh, the Allegheny case, it was uh, placed in conjunction with a Christmas tree, which was noted by the Supreme Court as a secular theme uh, and in totality was not viewed as an endorsement of religion by the government. And then I think I also heard you say there's a stronger case to be made if it's not at the central building. Could you just expound well, on that? Um, again, in, again, I'm referring back to the Allegheny case, which mm -hmm. did strike down uh, the uh, government in that uh, circumstances placement of a crash in its city hall right at the base of its staircase which was deemed by the court to be the central uh, uh, or heart of city government. It, uh, the court said in that case it, it really seemed to be uh, uh, located at a uh, preferred space that other applicants weren't allowed to make any type of display at. Yeah. So, so all of that in its totality, help me answer this very basic question, which you probably already did, but I'm going to ask it a different way. Because Pat's point is, and I think it's true, that the recommendation in 2003 was that we not put up the, the manger, the crash at, at City Hall. The city's manger, yes. The city's manger uh, in 2003. And today, I believe your recommendation is that we allow the menorah at the Kulik Center, which is public property. So could you just sort of, and I know you've touched on pieces of this, but could you sort of just I guess highlight for us really, the differentiation really, between those two issues? Uh, boiling it down, yeah. in that circumstance, uh, formerly it was uh, the uh, establishment of a nativity scene by the city, um, which could be argued was uh, a establishment or promotion of a particular religion, uh, contrasted what, with what is being uh, sought here this evening, which is uh, a private individual's uh, attempt to exercise uh, his First Amendment rights uh, through a nonverbal uh, display which still has First Amendment protection. It's a, it's a menorah as opposed to him out on the, uh, you know, speaking out at that location. Okay. Why are we just getting this on December 15th? Did, 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 did the government just come to city? Uh, I'm not sure. Recently? April? And Joe could speak December to that. December 3rd. <clears throat> we were approached on December 3rd with this item because of the uh, proximity of the holiday request um, and the sensitivity of the timeline, we did expedite a special event application. So again, this is um, private property that's going to be erected on public property, so we did request that they submit a formalized special event application that did define the event, the nature of the event, how it would be erected, how it would be secured, and again, that they would meet the insurance requirements of other uh, special events would be consistent with that. So um, to complete the special event process would require the approval at, uh, by City Council. And that, that's why it's being presented okay. today. Go ahead. Yeah, Dan. Uh, you know, to the extent that uh, re regardless of how council proceeds on this application, it, it may be appropriate for staff to provide recommendations uh, for going forward on this issue. Uh, I, I mentioned that a 
party isn't able to, uh, uh, the courts have said, you know, have such a display that it is so large that it uh, precludes others from having an opportunity to have their message. So uh, a framework of, of uh, time, place, and manner restrictions as it relates to this type of issue might be something uh, which council would like to see on a going forward basis. Am I able to speak? I just wanted to say to Mr. Chris, there's a Thanks. case called Lynch versus Donnelly, okay. and uh, it's just, it argued uh, before the United States Supreme Court and decided March 5, 1984. And it had to do with um, a city's um, nativity scene, and, and it had been on public property, um, and um, people had brought um, a suit against it. Um, I believe it was a city-sponsored uh, um, case. But anyways, the por point I'm getting at is um, when they were uh, deciding it, the, the ruling um, had reversed previous ruling. Uh, the Supreme Court reversed previous rulings in a vote of five to four, ruling that the display was not an effort to advocate a particular religious message and had legitimate secular purposes. That was for their crush. Right. Um, I think in that case there was a number of secular items. I think two frosty snowman figures, yeah. a couple of reindeer, uh, and, and, and a few trees. But we're speaking Part of a nativity scene being considered not a, um, you know, uh, religious item. It had legitimate secular purpose. So as the rabbi speaking of having the light and the um, goodwill and all that the nativity or the menorah represents, this particular ruling by the United States Supreme Court says that the crash or nativity has legitimate secular purposes. And it goes on, I could read further on the decision nope. if you're interested in, yeah. in hearing it. He's, he's familiar with that case, but yep. So even a nativity scene is considered a secular item. So, you know, as you know with the Establishment Clause and the uh, Lemon Test under the Lemon versus Kurtzman, that basically if it's open to one, it's open to all. It should not be uh, prohibiting a, a religious display or promoting another religious display, and it should allow other secular items. And so even the you know, so United States Supreme Court says it's, not, it's a secular thank item. You. Thank you. So that's all I'm saying. Dan, I, I agree that we probably need a policy going forward. We're not going to do it tonight, but probably in years past, it seems like the, the city doesn't, hasn't articulated a policy about what kinds of restrictions, if any, they want to do around these public displays on public property. I, I do have a, a, another question for you, though, because as we <coughs> figure out what that policy is, the Lynch case, which she just referenced, um, you know, I have done some reading on this over the last week because I didn't know anything about it a week ago and I still don't pretend to know much about it, but it said that the court rejected the notion that the accompanying sign notifying the observers that the nativity was owned by a Roman Catholic organization sufficiently removed the perception that the government endorsed the religious message. I guess what I read in that is just because it's privately owned, it could still give the perception that it's uh, government endorsed, even if it has a sign that says. So I, I thought I heard you saying the primary difference between 2003 and, and now is that this is private and the, and the other one was a that's city not the only. That, okay, that, that's, that's what I want to get at is what, what are the distinctions? That's the only distinction. It, okay. And that's, it, formerly, it was a city-owned nativity scene. Right. Uh, here, it, there, there's three, as I indicated, the lemon test talks about three items. Is there a, a secular purpose? Is there a uh, uh, does it have a principal effect of advancing uh, religion? Is that the message? Or does it uh, constitute an excessive entanglement between government and religion? And so you need to look at each one of those okay. criteria. Okay. Um, any other I just think questions? The liability involved in this is um, I, I, I don't we're opening up Pandora's box here by allowing this. I, I do believe, Dan. Well, I, I think that uh, through the chair uh, that uh, council, uh, as it relates to uh, certain locations, can implement going forward certain regulations in a content-neutral manner. Uh, we talked earlier 
or I talked earlier about the issue of uh, whether or not it is a public forum. I think on balance the community center is. Uh, certainly the case law is that sidewalks, streets, and public parks are. Um, and, you know, whether or not council look going forward wishes to uh, address what constitutes uh, public forums or, or identify locations that it is providing public forum status to is something that I think that it could, could do on another day. What were those three criteria again? Entertanglement with government? Content so, neutral manner and public forum. What was the first one? Content neutral Secular manner. purpose. Other questions or comments of council? Lloyd. Yes. I just have an operational question. My understanding of Hanukkah is that at dusk each uh, night of the festival that a can additional candle, or in this case a bulb, would have to be turned. I'm wondering if that is something that uh, is intended to be done by the rabbi or by city staff because of weekends, night, overtime issues, that kind of thing. Was that addressed in the in the special events permit? Or the ra she's pointing at the rabbi? That's Oh, it's on a timer. Okay. Well, is that smart? Modern technology. Right? <laughs> See that point, though? It's wonderful. Part if I may be the chair, <laughs> yeah. to that point, in the application itself, the costs are around application permit fee, recreational rental fee, and then a total fee is balanced out. But the, the uh, menorah was be erected by DPW employees. Is there a reason we're not charging for their time? I believe we can do it during the normal staff time. Okay. I'm trying to reduce entertainment. <laughs> yeah, I... I so this, yeah, well, I, I have to say that I have issue with that because so it, it, if staff is going to take the time to put up a religious symbol, um, that's taking time out of their day to do city work. Um, so whether the recreation fee covers that cost, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm not sure what that quote-unquote recreation fee is if it's rental property <laughs> it's rental um, fee of fifty dollars does that cover the cost of the salary for the workers no i'm sorry i it was there a question i didn't no. hear no 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 i was asking as more delays i mean do we know how long it would take um <sighs> okay well I guess through the chair, maybe to the, to the applicant, is he prepared to, to put the display up? That may address Councilman Pollock's issue. Uh, yeah, I don't have any issue if, if the individual, I mean, we have special events on streets where individuals put up their own equipment. So this, to me, kind of runs into the same, same issue. I think he just indicated a willingness to do that. I think because you're running into an issue of using city resources for a private uh, event, to so yep. to speak. Um, well, yeah, because, we for example, that. Pride, Ferndale Pride, if they, we're using PPW yeah. services to do whatever, Ferndale Pride has to pay that fee. DIY Festival has to pay that fee. You know, we're utilizing that staff, whether it's during the normal work week or the weekend, we're still having, you know, those special events have to pay that. So if this is a quote unquote special event, I, I think it needs to follow the same parameters. Mr. Mayor, if I may, I think we're in a discussion. Do you want a motion to proceed? Yes, please. All right, I would move uh, to approve the special event permit for the menorah display effective December 16th, 2014 to December 26th, 2014 with a lighting ceremony on December 23rd, 2014 as detailed by the special event summary and according to the following terms and conditions as listed uh, in the agenda item. I'm assuming I don't have to read all that. I right? support 16th to the 26th. Moved by Martin and supported by Piana. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, sure. Additional uh, discussion, comments? Um, I was raised Roman Catholic, um, and I now consider myself a spiritualist. So I don't want anyone to think that I'm playing re religious favoritism. Um, if you would have asked me a week ago um, when this was uh, first requested, I would have said no. Um, to me, the Constitution is clear regarding the separation of church and state. 
And just so that I'm clear, I have some other issues in regards to in God we trust on our currency and under God in the Pledge of Allegiance. However, over the past week, I took the time to research the symbolisms of the winter holidays. Obviously, a manger scene is directly connected to Christianity. The menorah is directly connected to Judaism. The meaning of the symbols has not changed over millennium and would be hard to argue. However, a lit decorated evergreen tree and bough or garland are actually pagan symbols to recognize the winter solstice, which in early Christianity was ruled sacrilege, um, and many still today consider them secular symbols. The evergreen wreath actually started out as the harvest wreath that was hung on doors year round long before creation of Christian, uh, Christian religions. So I'm right, brought right back to the two original symbols, the menorah and the nativity scene, and my firm belief in separation of church and state. Um, the request, as I understand it, is for someone within the community to temporarily display a religious symbol on government property. No one is asking or demanding that a religious symbol be permanently placed um, on government property for eternity. Um, as I understand it, the individual will handle the costs of erecting and removing the display uh, when it is over and that no city employees will be involved and if they are, a certain fee would uh, be charged. So from my point of view, um, I, I would have to support this request. My humanity dictates that. I can't deny someone the opportunity to express their religious freedom. No, and, and I agree with you, Greg. And, and, um I'm all for somebody expressing their religious beliefs. Um, therefore, I'm going to encourage, I, would, I too was raised Catholic. Therefore, I'm going to encourage somebody to bring an activity scene. Uh, we already gave that one to St. James, so we can't get it back. <laughs> but, you know, if you got a Buddha, you want to put that up, go through the proper channels, do it, you know. Um, so, you know, I'm going to support it because, if one thing, I was told that we're running into maybe some legal issues if we don't. So, um, I want to avoid that. And, uh, I'll support it at this time, but uh, like I said, after the first year, we need a policy. Yeah. Well, that's you and me, Mike, because we're, uh, we're the ordinance, we're the ordinance committee. I support this as well. I, I would like to see a long-term policy that makes you know sense and isn't compliant. I don't think this is an endorsement of one specific religion by any means, and I don't see any reason why we shouldn't do this on a temporary basis. Mm -hmm. I, I follow what the rabbi opened with, that um, we're about inclusiveness mm -hmm. and religious acceptance. And I think law has changed over the last 10 years um, that addresses the freedom of speech as it pertains to uh, religious displays. And I think the community center is a, um, a welcoming um, city building in which all religions um, would be available for future displays as we set the policy um, in, the, in the new year. So I'm very supportive as well, despite my non-religious upbringing. Oh, do I have to say I was an Episcopalian? Because we're all kind of confessing. I, I know. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No, Catholics confess. <laughs> Catholics confess. I'm being drawn in. And I, I, so I, I, I guess I, I would also say that don't take my questions to be um, opposed to this. I, I actually I, I agree with the rabbi, and I think this is an appropriate commu community to display diversity of all types. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make sure that we're within our legal parameters, uh, because as it turns out, we don't really have a policy, and we've sort of unofficially just not done it since 2003. Um, but we don't have a policy, and we really should, just so that it's clear as people apply to the city to do things uh, of a religious nature that, that they understand what's allowed and what's not allowed. So thank you for allowing us to sort of feel our way through this. Uh, uh, don't take that as an unwelcomeness on the part of the city. But I think it, it was an important discussion that we have, and I think that after the holidays, uh, it would be helpful if our ordinance committee would draft some language that might guide future councils uh, in this sort of situation. The other thing is I'm, I, I'm very sensitive, although I am a person of faith, that the government never even is perceived as endorsing one over the other. And so that's why I want to be very careful how we do this. Um, uh, that we do it for everyone or we don't do it for anyone. If we think everybody would be tacky, I don't know. I've seen some some displays that are hideous. So I'd be very curious uh, how we end up on it. But I want to make sure that wherever we wherever we end up, that it, it is um, uh, gives the message that Ferndale is welcome to all face and no face uh, as people see fit. So uh, I will be supporting it as well. Well said. Uh, anyone else? Then Sherilyn, would you call the roll? You bet.
go to your back there. Council members Martin? Yes. Polica? Yes. Yana? Yes. Lennon? Yes. Mayor Coulter? Yes. Thank you. And uh, Rabbi, if you need a hand tomorrow, uh, <laughs> uh, tomorrow, right? All right. Actually, if you go on the Ferndale Forum, you can probably state that you need some help, and there's 1,300 people that will respond. <laughs> Thank, thanks for being here. Uh, all right, the next item of business is uh, item D, the consideration of a third amendment to the fire protection agreement with Royal Oak Township. And uh, April, are you going to tee that one up? Thank you. Uh, we're very excited to report that after, I think, almost nine months negotiation um, with Royal Oak Township and really the state, um, as you know, just to back up just a little bit, that um, Royal Oak Township um, fell under emergency management as it relates to um, the state initiative and ended up actually with a consent agreement. So what that did was allowed uh, Royal Oak Township to uh, take a look at all their vendors and their contracts and things of that nature to uh, – and make sure that they have a balanced budget at the end of the day. So we work very closely with the state as well as Royal Oak Township, um, and we are happy to report that they will continue to do fire service with the city of Ferndale, which uh, we are very pleased about, and I know that Royal Oak Township is excited to be partners with us as well again. Um, a couple changes to the contract include, um, uh, one of the big ones is that Royal Oak Township actually has a levy on their um, police and fire. They're separate, they're a police levy and a fire levy. And so what we've done is mirrored the, the rate of which they bring their levy in for fire to, um, the, to support the costs uh, as it relates to our services. So they're, right now we're um, <coughs> looking at a goal of a $250,000 a year revenue stream, uh, which is comparable and the same as Pleasant Ridge. Their levy right now uh, they believe will bring in anything between two hundred and thirty seven to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We're getting very close to that to that mark. Um, their uh, audit firm can't give obviously as you know a, a straight answer as it relates, but it won't be less than two hundred and thirty seven and the goal is to get it to two hundred and fifty thousand. The other um, significant aspect of this contract is actually puts us in a better position is that um, they will continue on moving forward with the city of Ferndale and a two-year notice will be required for termination. So that was a big adjustment, which is great because before I think it was like 60 days or I think between 60 and, nine and six months. So both of us are, both Royal Oak Township and the city of Ferndale are very pleased to be able to remain partners and uh, we're really happy that we could work with the state and Royal Oak Township to keep the contract. So I believe this went in front of their board on, on December 11th. The only question I have is what is the uh, state's ability to end this contract on the township's behalf, even though there's a two-year commitment? Um, two -year it, with a two-year notice? Sure. Well, I as, mean, with any emergency management, <coughs> at any time right now they're in a consent agreement. If that moves in a different direction and they have to go through uh, actually getting emergency manager, I think at that point everything is null and void. Yeah. But, well, my opinion is is that um, I really am glad that you've negotiated a two-year, which gives us um, a lot more leeway time to plan, but it's sort of somewhat weak because the state can do whatever they want, you know, they can, uh, without a lot of notice. They can, but you have to remember one of the unique situations that Royal Oak Township is in is they actually have a levy that supports, they can only pay for fire from that. So there really would be no okay. reason for the state to come in. It is, a, it is protected in a different manner in that capacity. Chief, anything to add to this? No. Nope. Other comments or questions of council? Nope. Just nope. staffing stays the same? Yes. Everything stays the same? Yes. A motion. I move to approve the third amendment to the fire protection agreement between the city of Ferndale and the township of Royal Oak. Support. Moved by Pollock and supported by Martin. Final comments, questions on this item? Thank you. Please express our thanks to Royal Oak Township. Yes. Absolutely. I was, I was just going to look and say, I think this is the last time I'm going to say, Sherilyn, would you call the roll, please? <laughs> Council members Piana? Yes. Lennon? Yes. Martin? Yes. Pollock? Yes. Mayor Coulter? Yes, thank you. That item is adopted. Our uh, next item of business is called the council. I see the police chief there, and, in, and I see gifts on the table. So you might have something to say this evening, chief. Again. Again. 
Thank you, Chief. Derek, anything from economic development this evening? Uh, we did not get your presence either, but also from the, the CDC. <laughs> Thank you so much. Michael Larry. I do want to say I love you very much. You're in there. I've known you closely, and you're a wonderful person. We're all in there. And happy holidays to everybody. Thank you. We're trying to make you cry. Um, <laughs> it's working. Hire <laughs> Chief Sullivan, anything for the good of the community this evening. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, Council, um, over Thanksgiving we had a fire in a chemical facility in Ferndale and we had a lot to be thankful for because all their safety systems and redundant safety systems engaged and contained the fire. Uh, a couple of Ferndale and Hazel Park firefighters went in and knocked it down. Uh, we called in a hazmat team and did multiple testing. At no time was the public ever in danger and there were no chemical leaks in the facility. So. Uh, redundant safety systems and having everyone sprinkle things paid off an extremely uh, big dividends on that day because yeah. uh, it could have been a real mess. Uh, they were mixing anywhere from 10 to 12 chemicals into piping from uh, many acids and bases to formaldehydes and other things. So had those all mixed and been on fire, we would have had a very large mess on our hands. But that worked out really well. So just... Uh, a big thanks to a company who follows through with all their safety protocols and make sure their systems and redundant systems are in play uh, pays off big time. Well, kudos to your, your guys as well. Thank you. And then, Sherwin, <coughs> it's been an honor. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. I won't make you cry. Right back out. <laughs> I, I have one question for you. Sure. How many phone calls did we receive from the implosion of the Southfield building? <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe we received any. It was over to Chief Collins. I don't believe we received no. it. I did, my alarm didn't go off. I was supposed to be there. I wanted to I see it. Really? I would have thought so. It sure was a noise. I heard a couple wow. people in Pleasant yeah. Ridge said it shook their house. It yeah. shook mine. Is that it? Yeah. I went to the window. I'm like, what? Well, the world? 17, <laughs> 17 <laughs> stories drop into the ground is a lot of weight, so I'm, yeah. I'm sure we're on a plate that yeah. we all share deep underneath us. <laughs> but no calls. Thanks, Chief. Jill, anything from recreation this evening? Um, I'd just like to take a minute and echo what Brett and Rachel had to say earlier from the Boys and Girls Club. It has been a wonderful experience. Um, the feeling is definitely mutual. Their staff is amazing. They're doing a wonderful job with, um, with the students. Um, they've helped us out quite a bit. Um, we recently had our breakfast with Santa and their um, teens came in and rocked our concessions and rocked our um, cooking pancakes for all the kids. They did a great job. We received many compliments. Um, they also helped out with our Hilton Fall Festival, um, which helps them in turn. They have a leadership program, which I don't think Rachel mentioned, um, that requires their students to um, do a number of community service hours throughout the year, um, which is perfect. So we have a, quite a few events that we need volunteer hours for. So i um, just like to echo what, what they said. The, it's been great. Um, and again, Sherilyn, we will miss you. Um, Thank you. And I wish you nothing but the best for the future. Appreciate that, Jill. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. Lloyd, anything from DPW? We're done picking up leaves, right? No leaves. No, we're <laughs> done with that. Um, I just have two quick updates for Council on our, our two ongoing projects. One is the East Nine Mile Project. Last week, all the underground work was completed. Um, this week, they're finishing up a little bit of concrete work, and then for the remainder of the re week, you will see very little activity as they wait for the concrete to cure. Um, everything going as anticipated and weather cooperating, which so far it has. Uh, they should be done and wrapped up before the holidays. And um, so next week, um, once the concrete cures, you'll see a little bit of restoration. Some will take place in the spring, uh, but some striping still has to be done, and the temperatures have to cooperate in order to get that done. Um, when we started this project, we had two main goals. One was to uh, save money, which, as Council knows, when we split the projects and rebid them, we did save a little over $80,000. Uh, and the second was is to try to uh, shorten up the time frame and so that it wouldn't impact our special events. Um, by this project finishing now, uh, prior to the end of the year, it sets, up, sets us up very well for the next uh, phase of the project, which will be 
mostly just a milling and uh, paving project, which will go much quicker. So that will work out very well for us. The other is, um, I think the community has quite a bit of interest uh, based on some of the comments that I'm, and emails that I've been getting, and that's the traffic signal at Marshall, Illinois. Um, what has happened is on the 2nd of November, which was a late Sunday night, we had a driver come through and completely total the intersection. Uh, typically, this type of project would take anywhere from six, eight months, possibly more, depending on the location, to design, bid, and construct. Um, I have to really commend our engineer uh, for the work that they've done, HRC, uh, Brad Scheffler. They, um, we asked them to rush this project. Uh, the entire intersection had to be redesigned. I'm happy to report that we actually already opened the bids on Friday. Um, and the uh, winner has been um, selected, the low bid has been selected. And the, um, this morning I submitted both uh, to both insurance companies, the cities and the driver, uh, to be a reimbursed for those funds. And we anticipate that project being done prior to the end of January. So we've taken a six, eight month project and narrowed it down considerably. And we look forward to getting that back in operational. Did we consider at all just retaining the four-way stop? The four-way stop? Yeah, that, that's there now, the temporary solution. It's temporary, yes, until the signal light gets back up. Did we consider keeping it a four-way stop? Uh, um, we have not. There is a, a process to go through to do that. Um, it appears based on the community's interest and the proximity to the school that it probably warrants keeping. Okay. What's that? There's not many people following it, and that was going to be my question. Is there any, I don't know if this is a question for the police chief or you, but is there anything that we can, I think people aren't used to it or something, they're not following it. Is there anything that we can do either in flags or blinkers or something to make that more noticeable? Mr. Mayor, we, you have, sorry. We had one rollover. We had a rollover over there. Yeah, All right. Thanks, Lloyd. Very good. And Joe, anything from the chief innovation officer, soon to be interim city manager's office? Okay. <laughs> Say it in the mic, please. Thanks. Say it in the mic, please. Just yeah. <laughs> um, I, I do look forward to serving as the interim city manager in April stead. Um, I also wanted to take this opportunity to congratulate Sherilyn on her future endeavors and thank you for all of your awesome work. Oh. The Von Trapp family will be congratulating you next. <laughs> so long farewell. <laughs> um, and happy holidays to the city council and everybody in the community. Thank you, Joe. And it does remind me because I've gotten like three texts already. Somebody made the comment about April leaving. Mm -hmm. So just to reiterate, it's maternity leave. It's yeah, not, uh, she's not going to Milwaukee or, or <laughs> leaving the city employee. She's going on maternity leave. Um, Sherlyn, um, you get, <laughs> you get one last shot. Oh, um, I just want to invite everyone out to the web Thursday night at 5.30 for my going away party. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be there. <laughs> Great. Um, Awesome. All right, April. Um, as noted, um, I am, this is my last council meeting. I will be returning at uh, the next council meeting I will be at will be March 23rd. Um, and I am going to be on maternity leave, spending some time with our new daughter if she decides to ever come. Um, but with that, <laughs> you know, Joe is taking over during my absence and uh, I look forward to um, having a few months off with a baby, but I will look forward to coming back as well, and I appreciate all the support that council has given me throughout this pregnancy. So thank you very much, and I will see you on March 23rd. Yes. All right. Dan, you had a lively night tonight. Anything else? Yes, I'd, actually, department? I'd like to thank uh, council for their questions on the uh, menorah issue, the First Amendment issues. It's a very complicated area of the law. Look yes. forward to assisting council in the new year as it relates to uh, addressing that issue on a going forward basis. Uh, and then I would like to extend my uh, uh, best wishes to Sherilyn. It's been a pleasure working with her. I, I know that uh, you're going to uh, 
uh, Milwaukee, but uh, we're, we're going to think about you and we're really going to miss you. Um, and we wish you all the best, or I wish you all the best. Thank, Thank you so much. Dan, uh, it seems like we've been saying goodbye for two months, but <laughs> I, uh, I wish you the best. You've been fantastic here, um, and um, you know it's just not going to. Full faith in Marty, it's just not going to be the same without you. So you'll certainly be missed. So make sure you keep in touch. And uh, and then lastly, I just want to wish everybody a very safe and happy holiday season. I know, Councilman Lennon. Yes, I too echo the same sentiments. Cheryl Lynn, she sure has updated our clerk's office. Uh, it was a little inadequate. Um, uh, you know, it wasn't automated. Uh, you've done wonders. So, uh, good, word. good luck at the Shots Brewery in Milwaukee. <laughs> Some of you might be too young to remember that. Um, and wish you well. We'll see you Thursday night. Thank you. Okay. And April, good luck. Merry Christmas to everybody and uh, happy and safe New Year. Thanks, Dan. Uh, Councilman uh, Pollicum. Uh, this is the last meeting of the year, so I have a few things. Uh, first off, um, a couple of years ago, before I came on council, I stood in front of council and wanted to know why our clock tower wasn't working. <laughs> and most people said, what clock tower? Right. <laughs> and there actually is a two-story brick chimney that we utilize as, as a clock as well. And lo and behold, a couple weeks ago, um, the DPW went out and fixed that clock. Shut up. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and it now <laughs> works. Really? <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much to our incredible DPW that just goes out and fixes things before they're even told to fix something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Jeannie Davis uh, mentioned the historic tour. I wanted to thank all the sponsors uh, and tour guests. Uh, we had over 50 people um, go through the, the homes listed, and we raised over $1,500 for the Historical Society. Um, and speaking of historic, I uh, just want to share my sentiments and my disappointment with the uh, demolition of the First Church of Ferndale. Um, and that has resulted me in um, starting to do some research into possibly creating a historic commission. Um, so with, uh, I've already contacted, uh, Cheryl Lynn has assisted me in getting more than 100 pages worth of documents uh, over the past 20 years. <laughs> I have a lot of reading over the holiday vacation. Uh, so with council's permission, um, I would like to continue forward with researching this um, and then bringing back some some thoughts and ideas of uh, the creation of historic commission for Ferndale um, lastly uh, Cheryl Lynn I am so gonna miss you you have been such an incredible asset to the city but you've been a wonderful friend people that don't um, and I know this isn't really goodbye uh, we might not see each other all the time <laughs> but I know that you and I will keep in touch um, and I want to wish you the best. Thank you very much. Gosh, you guys are making it very difficult. <laughs> I'm going to miss you all very much. I'll miss you too, by the way. I had pregnant brain. I, I understand completely. Everybody was doing it, so we will miss you very much. <laughs> we'll be talking. Yes. <laughs> Councilwoman <laughs> Piana. <laughs> Um, April, I know you're going to be a great mom because um, you handle the six of five of us um, very skillfully, and I can only imagine that um, your baby will be easier than us. Um, um, so congratulations on the new addition to your family, albeit not yet arrived. And Sherilyn, I know you're going to um, be awesome uh, wherever you land next. Um, so. Uh, live long and prosper um, in your new adventure. Um, and I do wish everybody a safe and happy holidays. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to add some sad news to this. Um, lame duck session is still in place for one more week, and this is the opportunity where cities can possibly get screwed a little bit more. Sorry for my language, but that's kind of how I feel about our lame duck session currently going on um, up in Lansing. Um, please call your legislators, particularly about the transportation bill, which not only undermines um, revenue sharing for cities, also um, reduces funding for our schools, which are already 
um, hanging on uh, with the funds that they have. And of course, um, we need new revenues to pay for our roads. You can't move around money and expect to have improvements to our roads. So I encourage everybody to call their senators and let them in uh, House representatives to let them know how they feel about um, the current bills uh, on the floor for one more week. Um, who knows? We may get a gift or we may get a lump of coal. So we will uh, see what happens. So please call your legislators and let you know how you feel. And I hope everybody has a safe and happy, happy yes, and holiday and happy new year. Um, and I will wrap up with a few things. First of all, Sherlyn, thank you very much for all you've done, not only to modernize our processes, but to bring your sunshine to our city hall. Thank you. Thank you. I have only one requirement is that you can't become a Brewers fan or anything crazy like that. Oh, no, like no that. cheese heads. None okay, of thank you. <laughs> um, no offense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, April, good luck. Hurry back. Okay, that's all I have to say about that. Um, speaking of lame duck, there is actually a bill that's still floating in Lansing okay. that you didn't mention, and thank that you. is, no, thank you. I, I think it's called the Religious Freedom Act. I yeah. call it the License to Discriminate yeah. Act. But there's going to be a very large rally here in Ferndale on Thursday at City Hall at 7 p.m. And so if you would like to lend your voice uh, with myself and maybe hundreds of others who are going to be here on this Thursday at 7 o'clock to... Uh, express our displeasure with that with that particular piece of legislation. Come by City Hall Thursday at 7 o'clock. We would love to see you. Otherwise, I would just like to say Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, and Happy New Year to all of our residents, and our meeting is adjourned. Wow. We have to go in closed session. Oh, closed session. That's correct. It is not adjourned. We are not adjourned. Can I do that? <laughs> yes. Anybody got it in front of them? All right, unadjourned because we, yes, I need a motion to go into closed session. Sorry. I agree. The rest go of you can go home. Sorry. We can't. I'm sorry. You moved? I moved to go into closed session. <coughs> I'm sorry, Council Member Piano. To consider you material <laughs> exempt sorry. from air. Yes, to consider material exempt from discussion or to closure by state or federal statute pursuant to the MCL 15.268. Can I add to that? Can we take a 15 minute break before there are 10 minute break? Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five. That's five minutes is fine. Yes. Yes. If you second wait, wait. it, I second it. All right, you second it. All in favor? Mike, Mike, we need a roll call. We probably totally screwed it up for you. That's it. All in favor? I mean, <laughs> Council members, Sh Sh do the roll, please. Council right. members, Lennon. Yes. Martin. Yes. Paulica. Yes. Piana. Yes. Mayor Coulter. Yes. Thank you. We are in closed session. <laughs> With a five-minute break. With a five-minute break. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> Yeah. What's that? No, no no <laughs> I noticed that. I'm like, wow, I should threaten to leave more. Oh, I don't know. Was I? Yeah.